Hey everyone, it's Gabriel here. Singapore just announced a second lockdown during the time of this video recording and I know that many parts of the world are already in the third or fourth lockdown and small businesses are greatly affected and they are now forced to go online. This is the reason why digital marketing is no longer just a good to have but it is a must have if you want your business to not just thrive but to survive. But digital marketing can be confusing and hard to navigate especially if you are just starting out. So today I want to share with you a step-by-step -step digital marketing 101 guide on how to start using digital marketing to scale your business and by the end of this video you will learn exactly where to start how to start and how to use digital marketing to scale your business online. And even if you're not going to do the marketing yourself, you're going to hire someone, it's always good to know the macro big picture so you don't end up hiring someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about. Honestly, there are a lot of scammers out there that claim they know a lot, but they do not. So this next 10 to 15 minutes of your time will definitely be a good investment. As some of you know, I run one of the most highly sought after digital marketing agency in Singapore and we have helped multiple business grow from literally zero dollars to seven figures within just a few years. And with the same marketing skill set, I've also helped grow one of my education company from zero to $10 million in sales in less than 12 months becoming the first Singapore company to achieve the prestigious 2 Comma Club X award given by ClickFunnels when they have verified that you have achieved at least $10 million in sales through using their website building software. I've also trained hundreds of business owners across many different industries, including coaching, consulting, cost creators, even traditional businesses such as F&B, hair salon, beauty salon, and wellness center. Now, I'm not sharing this to you to brag, but to let you know that I know most of your questions and pain point when it comes to starting out in digital marketing. The usual questions I get from my students are, number one, there are so many platforms, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, it's so confusing, where do I start? Number two, some guru says run ad, some guru say don't run ad, what should I do? Number three, what about sales funnel, email marketing and all that stuff? So I'll be answering all this right now in this video. By the way, I appreciate early thumbs up for this video because I've been releasing videos like this weekly on digital marketing strategies that I've used to scale my business to over eight figures for absolutely free. And I don't have any causes to sell you. I also release videos covering my own investments to achieve absolute financial freedom, as well as videos on how I stay extremely productive, like gaining the ability to read a book a day or working just four hours a day, but producing 12 hours worth of work and so on. Now, if these topics interest you, consider subscribing to my channel. So I've done a very, very simple slides because I know that some of you will need visual representation to learn better. So let's get right to it. So uh, this is my simple formula, four step formula for digital marketing. All you gotta understand is just this four step to understand the whole entire digital marketing framework. So the first step is what we call gather, right? Second step is capture, third step is nurture, and then fourth step is close. So gather, capture, nurture, close. And if you can see, it looks like a shape of a funnel because uh, to understand marketing, you also have to understand a sales funnel. So gathering means that you're gathering a, a ton of people, let's say that's 10,000 people you gather, and you're gonna capture a thousand people's information. You nurture them. So perhaps uh, when you capture a thousand, uh, let's say 500 of them respond to your nurturing, and then eventually you close a hundred of them. So you realize the numbers get lesser and lesser, uh, and, and that's why it looks like a form of a funnel. So what is this four step about? Let's start with the first one. The first one is gather. Now, sometimes I call this traffic, right? Because gathering is just where are people gathered at, right? Where are people gathering? So you're going to these places where they're gathering to find people, which is basically traffic into your website uh, to know about your product and services, okay? So these are all the places that you can find people gathering, right? Again, these are all what we call traffic source as well. Now, you see, digital marketing has not changed much. The marketing has always been the same, just that everything is now digital. So for example, right, uh, there's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, these are different places where you can find different types of people. There are also specific group of people on different platforms. For example, if you want to look for younger crowd, obviously TikTok is somewhere that you can go to. Uh, if you want to look for older crowd, slightly older crowd, you probably got to go for Facebook. Um, you know, people who are, you know, range of 30s, 40s are all there. Uh, and YouTube will probably be people range from 20s uh, to 30s. Now, of course, these are not absolute. These are just a rough uh, idea of what kind of people are on, are on each platforms. Now, 
If you look at like marketing it has never changed, right? In the past, where do people gather? Before there was Facebook, before there was Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever, people gather at shopping malls. So, and you realize that certain shopping malls at different parts of the country or different parts of your state attract different kinds of crowd, right? There are certain shopping malls that generally attract younger crowds. I remember when I was young in Singapore, uh, in Orchard area, there's this shopping mall called uh, Cine Leisure, where it's a place for watching movies. And that it was a, it was a shopping mall that attracts a lot of young people, like people literally at 16, 17, 18 years old, all the cool kids will be hanging out there, right? And then when you go to places like uh, uh, AMK Hub, which is a heartland mall uh, in the north of Singapore, that's where you get slightly older crowd or, or places like Topayo, you get sl slightly older crowd. So I know I'm saying some places that if you are from other countries, you won't understand, but the idea is that, right? It, you know, before there was social media, people go to different shopping malls to look for different crowds. So it's like going to this crowd, this shopping mall, setting up a store there, and and so you can tap on the walk-in traffic of that shopping mall, right? So if you look at Facebook, which Facebook is just a bunch of, it's like a shopping mall, a bunch of people who are there gathering, and then you can set up a, a so-called store there to, uh, to gather the traffic that is on Facebook, right? So same thing, you can gather the traffic on Instagram, you can gather the traffic on LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, YouTube, uh, depending on what kind of crowd you want to gather, right? So like I said, Facebook is slightly older crowd. Instagram is slightly more young adult. Uh, it's getting older now because all the young kids and cool kids that were on Instagram has all grown up. Uh, LinkedIn is more professional. So if you are looking for B2B, then LinkedIn is more for you. TikTok is for younger people. Uh, you know, when I mean young, they are, I mean like people all the way to 13 years old to like, you know, uh, uh, early 20s. Uh, and then YouTube is more ranging from people who are 20s to like their, their late 30s. And more for people who are le willing to learn because on YouTube, uh, it's a very different crowd. Uh, for example, on Facebook, people are there to, you know, connect with friends or they're there to, you know, gossip, look at, you, you know, what, look at what's going on uh, on their newsfeed uh, and to entertain themselves. But on YouTube, yes, there are some people watching cat videos, but the biggest difference with YouTube is that people are actually on YouTube watching educational stuff, right? They are watching how-to videos, just like you guys right now. You're, you're, you're on here watching a how-to video, learning about something. So especially if you're selling educational stuff, right? You're a course creator, you're a consultant, you are a coach. YouTube might be a better place than Facebook because People are already, you know, on, on YouTube trying to learn something. So they have a different mindset, right? So the idea is to know where to gather your crowd. And uh, I generally like to say that there's always two types of traffic source, right? So that means two types of places where people gather or two types of ways for you to gather people uh, from all these different platforms, okay? So there are two ways. Number one is paid, right? So paid traffic is one way and paid traffic including anything that you're paying for. So if you're paying for advertising, right? You're paying for advertisement, you pay, uh, you pay an ad on Facebook, you pay an ad on YouTube. Those are examples of paid traffic. The second one is called earned traffic. So earned traffic, uh, again, not to be confused by paid. If you are constantly posting on YouTube, like what I'm doing right now, I'm posting videos, right? And I'm, I'm earning subscribers. So there's no way I can buy subscribers, technically speaking, right? There's no way I can buy subscribers. I have to keep posting videos every single week. And the more I post, the more YouTube algorithm will recommend my video, which is the reason why you need to like this video because I'm super awesome right now. So, right, this is our earned traffic, right? So the more I post, the more subscribers I get. Same thing for Facebook uh, or Instagram. The more you post, the more followers you get, you're gonna get certain exposure. And these are not things that you can buy, right? After you post, you, you provide value. People are, people are gonna start following you. And so now you have certain exposure because if you have, let's say, uh, a million followers, then when you post something, you're gonna get a certain organic reach, all right? Sometimes we call it organic as well. So let's call earned traffic. So there's only two ways, paid traffic or earned traffic, okay? Now, both of them have good and bad. So when people tell you, you know, don't go for earned traffic, uh, don't go for paid traffic, just do earned traffic. Or people say, uh, don't go for earned traffic, just do paid traffic. You know that they are not good marketers. Great marketers, utilize both. I use both. I have paid ads running every single day, generating me millions of dollars of sales because paid traffic is certain, right? I have certain certainty of what, uh, how much sales is coming in every single month. I, I cannot just wait for people to come find me on YouTube and just depend on earned traffic all the time, right? Because it takes time. Earned traffic takes time. So I have paid ads that is running right now that is bringing sales for me, for my business to grow. But I know that paid traffic, okay, is not really a long-term strategy because if you keep running ads, you know, one year, two years, three years, four years, people are seeing your ads all the time. What will happen? They're gonna get sick of seeing your ads, right? They're gonna start to hate you. 
That's the downside to ads. So ads is amazing. You can get five, five X, 10 X return, which is what we are doing right now. And uh, we're doing that um, a lot for our YouTube ads client. Uh, we're helping our, our clients run ads on YouTube and we're getting them amazing returns. Uh, when I mean 5X, 10X, it means that when they invest a thousand in ads, they're getting back $10,000, right? They invest uh, 10,000 in ads, they're getting back at least $100,000. So we're doing that for YouTube right now. And if you are interested, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you have to. If you are interested, I do run a coaching program. Uh, this is not like a course or anything, but if you are interested, right? You are business owners, you're you are, you are a business owner and you're doing uh, at a certain revenue, you can jump on a quick call with us for us to look through your business and to determine whether you are suitable for this program, right? So we basically help people uh, on a, on a hand-holding basis to help them to sell our YouTube ads as well as agency. If you're interested, just click on the link below. There's a description. You can watch a free YouTube ad training. And then from there, if you are suitable, you can jump on a call with us, okay? So let's get back right, uh, right to this. So, so that's paid traffic. I'm running tra paid traffic right now to gather uh, leads, to gather customer. But at the same time, because paid traffic is not a long-term strategy, I need to create an earned traffic strategy so that I'm running both at the same time, right? That's the reason why I'm posting on YouTube. That's the reason why I'm posting on Instagram. Because one day, uh, paid traffic is no longer gonna work for me, I believe, right? Long-term, when I mean long-term is three, at least three to five years, I, I will have my earned traffic giving me substantial amount of leads, right? Because I mean, right now I only have like, what? 2,000 subscribers, it's not a lot, right? So. I'm not gonna get a consistent amount of leads that's gonna come in all the time. So because of that, I need to start building the earned traffic right now. Um, and because earned traffic takes time, it takes about at least one to two years. I do not know of anyone who built a sustainable earned traffic in just a few months. Honestly, I have not, right? I mean, if you look at all the um, big influencers that you know, uh, either on Facebook or YouTube, they took years to build. So this is the reason why if I take years to build, my business will go bankrupt, right? I have, I have a team to feed, I have, um, uh, you know, I have employees to pay, I have bills to pay. So I use paid traffic to generate good traffic, uh, to generate good money now. And I invest a part of my profit into earned traffic so that one day my earned traffic is gonna take over my paid traffic and I no longer have to pay for traffic again. So that's the best way for you to grow your business online. Does it make sense? So it's not just oh, pay or earn, right? It's not, it's not all, it's not either or, it's both. So what are the different type of paid traffic are there? So the first one is what we call interrupt ad, okay? And the second one is called search ad. So paid traffic is split into two, interrupt and, and search. And you have to determine based on your business, which is suitable for you. Because some business interrupt ads are more suitable, some business search ad is more suitable. So let me give you an example what's interrupt ads. So interrupt ads are like Facebook ads, right? You are scrolling on newsfeed and then you see an ad, it interrupts you. Uh, YouTube is the same thing, right? I'm sure right now as you're watching this video, if you're not on YouTube Premium, there may be an ad that will pop up before you watch this video. There may also be another ad that will pop up in the middle of the video, right? So those are what we call in-stream ad, and they fall under the category of interrupt ads. So the idea is that you don't have to worry about whether it's a Facebook ad, TikTok ad, YouTube ad, just need to know that they fall under the category as long as you interrupt people while they are doing something in order to show them an ad, it's called interrupt ads. Okay, so um, like I said, digital marketing is not new, right? It's just digital now, but marketing principle is always the same. Before there was digital marketing, right? Before everything was digital, what are some examples of interrupt ads, right? To give you an example, TV ads, right? You watch a TV and then suddenly a commercial appears right before a, a cliffhanger or something. And then there's a TV, there's a TV commercial. There's a commercial five minute break or something like that, right? So those are examples of interrupt ads. When you're driving, right? I didn't put all this example on the screen, but let's say when you're driving, right? So when you're driving um, and you know, when you're driving and then you see billboards, right? Those are examples of interrupt ads. So you see, it has never changed. It's just that, it's just that it, has, it has shifted platforms, right? So we went from TV to YouTube, that's all. But the idea is always the same, which is the reason why if you understand the principle and the, the marketing principle, you will know how to transit to a new platform if one day Facebook were to go uh, irrelevant or if someday YouTube become irrelevant and it goes to the next platform, I guarantee you there will always be another interrupt ad and another search ad that will be available for you, okay? So what are examples of search ad, right? So search ads would be like Google PPC. Do you realize that when you search on Google, there is always like ads, uh, there ads that will appear at the top, right? So you have ranking, which is the organic one, and then you have like ads, one or two ads, or maybe sometimes three ads. So those are Google pay per click, and those are more search based. Now, before there was Google pay per click, guess what were some examples of search ad, right? Before there was internet, you are hungry, or you have toothache, and you're looking for a dentist. What do you do? You pull out yellow pages, 
and then you search for dentist nearby you. That is an example of search ad because every business that are on yellow pages, they have to pay in order to be featured on yellow pages. So that means these are all examples of search ads, right? Like you don't actually, and, and by the, uh, so the yellow pages. So, and by the way, if you are a dental clinic, what kind of ads would definitely be more suitable for you? Interrupt ads or search ad? Usually search ad, because if you run an interrupt ads, right? Um, if, if someone is not in pain, right? Their, their tooth is not in pain. And then you run an ad that, 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 you know, that, that shows them an ad and say, hey, you know what, come for a free cleaning or whatsoever. I mean, yes, that may work, but people are not as inclined to take up the offer because they're not in pain. All right, or, or maybe a plumber, right? You don't have, you don't see an interrupt ad. You don't see a YouTube ad on like, hey guys, uh, we are the best plumber in town. You hardly see that. Why? Because people don't look for a plumber until something breaks down in their house. Right, until there's a water leakage or something like that in the toilet, then they will go on Google, right, and search plumber nearby or plumber 24 7. Okay, or you lost your key, right? They will look for key maker, you know, uh, locks me for whatever 24 7. And those are examples of search ad, right? So that's why certain business works better for search ad, certain business work better for interrupt ads. Now, personally, uh, we have gotten a lot of results with interrupt ads because interrupt ads are a lot cheaper than search ad because search ads is people who are uh, in pain. So that's why it's not just the business, but also um, generally search ads are more expensive. I would say 10, 20 times, even yeah, 10, 20 times more expensive than interrupt ads. So that's the reason why it's harder to become profitable with search ad, um, now unless you're in a very niche business, okay? So uh, those are an example of paid traffic, and then you have earned traffic. So earned traffic, you have borrowed traffic, okay? Which are all examples of like Google SEO, right? You, you can't buy first page ranking unless it's ad, right? If it's ad, it will show an ad at the corner of um, the, the, the ranking. But you know, on Google, you know, you wanna rank for first page, right? A lot of people write blogs and articles to rank themselves to be at the first page. So those are examples of SEO ranking. Now you cannot, uh, you cannot buy it, right? You have to earn it. You have to write enough articles, get yourself ranked in order to be on the first page. Okay, so same thing for Facebook IG followers. I mean, technically you cannot buy them, right? You can, I mean, you can buy fake followers, but I mean, real followers, you can't buy them, right? You have to post good content. Same thing for YouTube subscribers. I have to post video every single week. Uh, I have to post videos like this every single week in order for me to grow my channel. Same thing for TikTok. You have to post good content that people want. Now, the reason why I call it borrowed traffic uh, under earned traffic is because you don't actually own this traffic, okay? Uh, there, are, there, there has been, I hope one, I hope not, but uh, I'm always very prepared, right? There has been a lot of examples of someone, uh, YouTube account got shut down for no reason, okay? In fact, recently there was just one big influencer with more than 300 subscribers, uh, and he didn't even post anything wrong, right? He was just posting a video on Dogecoin, um, and his account was just banned. Now, thankfully, uh, YouTube actually gave his account back, but you can tell how scary this is, right? It was actually an algorithm issue where they detected something that wasn't actually there and then they just banned it. And thankfully he was able to reinstate the account by after he repeat, uh, after he appealed it. But I mean, think about it. You work so hard, built 300,000 subscribers and then one day YouTube just decided to ban you. Uh, and it's not even YouTube. The algorithm decided to make a mistake and just ban you. And then you're gone. Imagine your whole entire, you know, uh, business dependent on YouTube, what will happen? Your business will go to nothing. So that's the reason why it's called borrowed, right? Like I know that I'm building up, now it's important, that's the reason why I'm still building YouTube, that's the reason why I'm still building Facebook and all that. And of course, you know, Facebook, IG especially, uh, you probably heard a lot of uh, horror cases of Facebook account getting banned, uh, Instagram getting banned, and you can't get anything back. Um, so, um, so although it's important to build all these different presents, but I know I'm on borrowed time. I'm borrowing their traffic. I'm borrowing YouTube traffic. I'm borrowing Facebook traffic. I don't own the traffic. They can shut me down anytime. Or one day you can just change algorithm uh, and you get all examples like shadow banning and, and things like that where you know your, your posts no longer get as much organic reach uh, and then your business is affected, right? So even though this is important, um, I want to own my own traffic. So I diversify, that's the reason why, you know, I have a YouTube subscriber, I also have an email list, right? I have a phone list. I, uh, if you go and watch my free YouTube training right now, before you watch the training, I would capture your email address. And because I have an email address now, I can send you a bunch of emails, right? I, I own the email, 
No one can take the email away from me, right? Um, I also sometimes collect uh, your phone number so I can send SMS, uh, I, can, I can broadcast things to you. And, and those are leads that I own. No one can take it away from me. Now, the only thing I have to pay is the autoresponder to send out email, right? Like MailChimp and all that, which I'm gonna cover later on, right? So, so those are traffic I own, right? So these are all the different kinds of traffic sources that you can utilize to grow your business. Paid and earn, okay? You need to start both, right? It'd be good to, to start both. And then for paid, you can decide whether you want to go for interrupt ads, search ads, and then for earn, you need to have both. You need to have borrow and you have own, okay? Now, if you are confused with, okay, where do I start? YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. The whole key here is to just start. Find one platform that you feel that is more suitable for you. If you like to uh, write posts, I think Facebook is, is better for you because Facebook also um, uh, Facebook is also a place where you can you can do written posts. If you like to do videos, then, then YouTube. If you like to do short videos, then TikTok. Find whichever platform that is suitable for you and just start. The whole key point is just to be consistent. I have seen people who succeeded with TikTok. I have seen people who have succeeded with YouTube. I have seen people who have succeeded in Facebook. There's no point trying to compare. Facebook is better, YouTube is better, TikTok is better. All of them have people who are successful and making a lot of money and growing their business and serving people. So what's more important is to just start and just be consistent. Does it make sense? Okay. And ultimately, start to transfer these people into your email list and your phone list, which is traffic your own, which is the next part of that four step system that I've just talked about. Okay. So first part is gathering. And then the next part is capturing. Right, so capturing what? Capturing people's information, their, their email addresses, uh, their phone number, their name, so that you can start to communicate with them, right? So that you can turn them into traffic that you actually own. So there are many ways to capture, but the, generic, uh, the general way is to send people into a website and on this website, you collect information. So you've probably been there before, right? You probably, you know, try to sign up for a webinar where you, you, you know, in order to sign up for this webinar, you have to give your phone number and your email address and whatnot. Um, or maybe someone will give you a free ebook, right? So let's say right now, you know, I, you're on YouTube, right? You're on YouTube, I'm gathering you right now. And then I can say, hey, you know, no, go and watch my free YouTube training, which is true. You can go and watch my free YouTube ad training in the link, link in the description, right? And what will happen if you go to my YouTube ad training, I'll be asking you for your email. So I, I'm sending you into my website, okay, my funnels. And these are all the different softwares that you can use to create a, a website, right? You can use WordPress. What's popular right now is like ClickFunnels and then Wix is like a popular website creator. Uh, there are different kinds of software out there, right? And then I will capture your information. So here's an example, right? So if you see an ad or if you watch me on YouTube, I will send you a click on the link and then you can go to a website where I will ask you to give me, uh, to give me your email address in order to watch one of my free webinar, right? A free webinar training on how to uh, generate hundreds of ready quality uh, uh, hundreds of high quality ready buyers, right? With digital marketing. So once you put in your email address, then I'll send you into the training, right? But what happened? I've captured your information. That's the reason why it's called capture, okay? Now, uh, some of you here, let's say if you write blogs, right? So this is bulletproof blog. Um, have you ever seen, like if you go on Google, right? So Google, I don't have Google here, but yeah, Google, you're searching on Google and then you go and read an article. So this article says seven ways to keep your brain young as you age. And then you read through the article. And as you read through the article, you realize that sometimes this thing will pop up, right? There'll be, a, there'll be something that will pop up in between you reading the article. You've probably seen this before, right? And you ask you for your email address. So what is this doing? This is, cap again, capturing the information, right? Capturing your information, okay? So that you can, which is the next step, you can start to nurture these people. So we live in a digital age where it's so noisy. We live in a very noisy world today. There's so many advertising, so many people sharing about our products and services. Uh, now, and because, you know, for the right reason, because we are now digital, it's so much easier to advertise today compared to like when you're running uh, ads on TV commercial, right? It costs like, it costs like a fortune to run a TV commercial. But you know, if you want to run Facebook ads, it's just $5 a day today. So that's the reason why there are more and more competitors, right? Which is a good thing. Uh, competition creates better products uh, and ultimately that benefit the consumer. So, uh, but you know, you get consumer that is very skeptical now, right? Because they are bombarded by so many advertisements, so many people, people promoting their products and services and so on and so forth. So that's the reason why you need this step today. You need to nurture your audience, right? So once you capture the email, this is the reason why you start to include your email marketing into your digital marketing plan, where you start sending out what we call, sometimes we call it value email. Uh, and value email is just simply emails that adds value to them. It doesn't sell them anything. And then we have promotional email. You want to have a mix of value and promotion. Now, of course, you want to have more value. Every value email you send 
you build trust. Okay, and value email can be anything to market updates. So let's say you are in uh, your health coach, right? Then you want to send um, email uh, email on like recipes, right? Uh, workout ideas and routines, right? Now that the world is on lockdown, for example, one of the pain points, I can't go to gym. So if someone, uh, you know, who, who has me on their list, on their, on their email list, and is sending me, hey, you know what? Singapore is on lockdown right now. Here are some workout plans that can replace your gym at home. I would love this guy, right? Because he's giving me value. So in the future, if I want to hire a personal trainer or if I want to buy something, I probably buy from this person because this person has added value to me. So the, the best way you can build trust with your audience is to actually add value to them, provide things that adds value into your life. So you see, that's the reason why I'm doing this video right now. If you think about it, uh, I'm building the long, I'm, I'm in for the long term, right? A lot of people just want to sell, sell, sell. But look at this right now. You're watching this video. And if you are learning something, I have in a way, build trust with you. So if one day you want to hire someone to build your digital marketing uh, campaign, or if you want to uh, someone that can coach you in digital marketing, right? I probably be, may be the person that you can think of because I have at least added value to you. Does this make sense? So it really depends on what business you're in, but uh, every business you can think of, you can provide value. If you're in a wellness center, you can provide value on you know taking care of yourself. Uh, if you are a hair salon, you can provide value on latest trend, latest hairstyle, you know, whatever business, okay? So don't buy into the lie that, you know, oh, my business is different. I, I can't nurture my, uh, my, my audience. That's nonsense. So think about how you can nurture them, okay? By sending email. Email is one of the best ways to nurture, but you can also use other ways to nurture. For example, sending SMS, Telegram groups, uh, WhatsApp. I know there are some property agents that just use WhatsApp. They have a bunch of leads. And then let's say they have a market update about property, right? Uh, government just posted something. Uh, there's a policy update. There's, there's something that will affect the, the real estate market. They will send out a broadcast, right? Uh, I am I, I, I know a financial advisor. I, I mean, I, I, I buy some insurance plan and some uh, investment from uh, one of my friends who's a financial planner. And what he does is that every time there's an update, you know, government is giving some baby bonus or the government is doing something new or the government is changing certain things, he would send me a message on WhatsApp. And I, I, I guarantee you, he's not just sending it to me, he's sending it to a bunch of people that he knows, right? So, so he's actually part of this process, doing this part of this process without actually knowing it. Uh, and this process is called nurturing. So whichever way you can, email, SMS, WhatsApp, you know, uh, it can be Telegram group. Uh, it can be even be your, uh, your Facebook, right? When you're posting something on Facebook or YouTube, you're posting something on YouTube that is of value to people. P people can watch it, people can learn something from it. Um, you are nurturing them, okay? And so that you can nurture them for what? The final step, which is to close, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to close. If your business is, is constantly nurturing, 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 and it's not closing, it's not selling, you have no money coming in. And that's the reason why the last step is close. So um, there is actually this book by Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, and this book is actually called Jack, 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 Right Hook. So the whole idea, and I highly recommend you to read that book, okay? But the whole idea of the book is that, I mean, it's in the title. Jab, jab, jab means what? You're giving value, you're giving value, you're giving value. And then you right hook. So you're giving value more than you right hook, right? Because you jab three times before you right hook. So a lot of people I know, including myself, right? Uh, you know, very famous email marketers who's making seven figures. They, they told me that they have a, a ratio, right? They will send out uh, two to three value email, which is just email teaching you something. And then they will have a promotional email. So what's a promotional email? An email that sells you something. Okay, so that's called a promotional email, which is right hook. So every business is different. Some business you need to have 20 nurturing and then one right hook. Some business you just, you know, you can do one nurture, one right hook, one nurture, one right hook. So, so it really depends on business to business, but the idea is there. The idea is you need to always nurture your audience before you send them for a close, right? So that's where you push them. Uh, whether you're selling something online, uh, if it's an e-commerce product, then you probably send them to a checkout page where you get them to buy something and you give them a promotion uh, where, hey, you know what? Next 24 hours, there's a certain promotion right now. You can get it at 50% off or, you know, you can buy, you know, at, at a certain discount or one for one or whatever, right? So you're pushing them uh, sort of like a promotion. You're pushing them to buy something. Now, if you are selling services, then, you know, selling high ticket services, especially, you know, trainer, coaches, consultant, then, you know, it's not just sending them to a checkout page. You have to uh, close them through a phone call, Zoom or one-on-one -on -one meetup, right? So after you nurture, that's where you ask for the meetup. That's where you push them to book a call with you, right? And then you do the closing on the call, okay? So, same thing here, if you go to my link in the description and you click on the link to watch my free YouTube training, what's happening is the whole entire process, right? I am 
I'm capturing your information. Right now you're watching a video on YouTube, which is an earned traffic, okay, under borrowed traffic. And then if you were to go to my uh, website, which you can do so right now, you can click on the link and then you can watch my free YouTube ad training, how I have been scaling my, uh, my client's business to over eight figures with YouTube ads. And what will happen is that before you watch the training, I will have to ask for your email. So I capture information and then I nurture you, right? I will nurture you through the video that you're gonna watch, okay? As well as you're gonna start receiving some emails from me. So you're, you're witnessing the whole entire process, uh, you know, my own process as, as you're learning right now, okay? And then finally, when you jump on a call with me, right? And I'll, I'll just be straight up with you. If you are the right fit, right? If you have a certain revenue in your business, uh, you're doing you're doing well, and I believe that, you know, my team and I believe that YouTube ads can help your business, then we will tell you that, okay, you know what? We're gonna offer you a agency service, uh, and our agency service begins from $100,000, so it's not for everyone, or our coaching services, which begins from $10,000 uh, onwards, and again, not for everyone, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very close-knitted community where I do a lot of, you get to meet me like once every two weeks, uh, on, you know, online, and you get to ask me questions to scale your business and things like that. So it's so it's a lot of work and a lot of accountability. That's the reason why we price it higher. And if $10,000 is expensive to you, then you know, you're probably not in the category of people I'm looking for because um, a, a business owner that's doing at least you know, 300,000 a year, $10,000 is nothing much, okay? So we qualify and then we close, right? And then we'll offer you either a coaching or agency service. So that's the process, right? When you jump the call, we, we, we are, we are we're gathering you right now, okay? And then capture your information, nurture you, and then we go in for the close. Now, only if we find you a right fit, okay? So that's also a very important part of the closing. You don't want to just close everyone. Now, if you're selling an e-commerce product, obviously you're just, you know, a low ticket item, $27. You just want to sell as much as you can. You want to go volume. Uh, but if you're selling a high ticket service, uh, a note, something to take note is that you want to really qualify who's your right audience, who's not, because taking money from people you cannot help, uh, is going to cost you a lot of problem in the future, okay? So just to summarize, this is the whole entire process. Four simple step process gather people right from different different platforms capture their information nurture them using different platforms and then close them now if you are just starting out where you want to start out first is to start out from gathering start from paid ads okay start from paid ads and again the reason is because paid ads is something that is predictable if you were to spend ten dollars on ads you know you know that how much this is coming in tomorrow so um, that's not the same for earned traffic. Earned traffic is something you have to post content, you have to give value, and it takes some time before you build up, right? And it, again, it can take one year to two years. So what you want to do is start from paid ads first because it gives you that instant result. And then you can reinvest your profit back into earned traffic. So start from gathering and then start from capture, capturing. You need to understand this first two step first. You need to learn this two, first two step. You need to learn how to gather people and then how to capture. Um, now, there are many other resources on how to capture. Basically, it's by building a simple funnels. Uh, I personally use ClickFunnels. We are also developing our own software, which I will probably tell you guys uh, in the future. Um, but there are many different um, resources out there that you can learn from. Uh, I will put a link in the description uh, for a free masterclass that you can watch on how to learn how to capture people's information and ultimately how to nurture and how to sell them. Okay? So, or you can actually just watch my free YouTube ad training. Just saying. So, um, you got to learn this first two step first, gathering and capture. This is good enough for most people to start off first because if you don't know how to gather, you don't know how to capture. There's no point nurturing and closing because there's not enough people for you to nurture or even close. So if you want to have success in your digital marketing, you want to start generating leads. Master gathering and capturing first. So that's it for today. Hopefully this will give you a better idea on where to start and how to start. You may also want to watch my previous video on how I built a $10 million company with a simple funnel strategy somewhere here, as well as one of my previous video on my simple and easy $1 million Facebook retargeting strategy somewhere here. Uh, I don't know where the editor's gonna put, but there will be some link for you to click. And lastly, if you want to learn how you can fill your calendar with tons of calls and appointments or fill your webinar and scale your business, uh, using YouTube ads, I provided a link in the description for you to watch a free training that I've done for you. Please remember to give this video a like if you have learned something and comment in the comment section what is your biggest takeaway and I promise I'll be replying and reading every single one of them. So that's all I have for you today. Bye for now.